This video was sponsored by MyHeritage. Ahoy Star Pals, Jack Byer here for NSF, and in this week's Starbase update, we have new road closures. But what sort of testing will they be used for? There's been significant demolition work at the production site in preparation for the Star Factory expansion, boosters and ships both under construction and awaiting testing, and exciting new hardware that's arrived ahead of the next integrated test flight. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's start with some interesting news about upcoming boosters and ships. Booster 11 was fully stacked inside Mega Bay 1. The last stack fuses the fully assembled oxygen and methane tanks. It now waits next to Booster 9 in the Mega Bay for its test campaign to begin. Since Booster 11 is hidden on the left side of the structure, it's a little bit hard to see, but we are able to get a glimpse of stacking. But Booster 9 and Booster 11 are not the only boosters that are in Mega Bay 1 right now. Booster 12 has also begun stacking. Big parts of Booster 12 are already in front of the Mega Bay in the form of many ring stacks parked there. There look to be nearly, if not a totally complete set for Booster 12, so we could see Booster 12 take shape relatively fast. Next up, let's talk about ships. On the right side of the Mega Bay, we see Ship 28 fully assembled and with nearly all of its thermal protection tiles. It only has a few more gaps where work is still needed. Meanwhile, Ship 29 on the left hand side has also been fully stacked. Its nose cone and payload section were placed on its tank section using the new two-point attach system at the nose cone. Later, we could see the entire stack for Ship 29 rotating on the turntable in the high bay as SpaceX employed the welding robots at the side of the high bay to completely fuse both parts together. Next up, the rocket garden. That's where Booster 10 and Ship 26 are parked. It's currently unclear if they're just waiting for their respective turns in the testing flow, or if they're truly sidelined and destined to be scrapped, though I strongly suspect it's the former. In case you missed it, SpaceX recently released amazing new footage from Starship's integrated test flight. DOS managed to take that two minutes of footage and come up with over 30 interesting things to discuss. We released that video yesterday, so be sure to give it a look. Next up at the production site, the ground fabrication building has been partially demolished. This is in preparation for the significant expansion of the Star Factory building. Friendly reminder, the windbreak, the ground fabrication building, and the tents are all making way for an expansion of the Star Factory, which is going to give Starbase a completely new look. Part of this work is the movement of all of the nose cones that had been in Tent 3 out of Tent 3 and to other various locations in order to make way for the expansion. Here we can see Ship 30's nose cone being moved around. Later, the nose cones for Ship 32 and Ship 33 also left Tent 3 and were parked next door as SpaceX began demolishing. A few days later, Ship 34's nose cone was also moved out of Tent 3. And with that, four nose cones are placed next to the tent area. This really shows how far ahead SpaceX is in the production of ships. Moving on, as I mentioned, this week the ground fabrication building was partially demolished and part of that was more of its skin coming off. Before long, it's going to be a bare bones skeleton and then it'll be removed entirely. Before we take a deep dive on all the work that's been going on at the orbital launch site, let's take a quick word from today's sponsor. Have you ever wondered why you are the way you are? Why do I love bacon so much? Why am I able to grow such a robust beard? Do I have any interesting or long lost relatives like say Rasputin? For this video, we partnered with MyHeritage to do something really neat, test my DNA. I'm a total history buff and I love knowing how things work. So getting to learn more about my family and my origins in this way was really exciting to me. And I should take a second to note here that MyHeritage has committed in their privacy policy to never sell your genetic data and they won't even license it. That's really important. The test arrived in this nifty little kit and was super fast and simple to do. You basically just swab your cheeks for about two minutes. I packaged everything up, I sent it off, and I eagerly awaited my results. And well, the day has come. It's results time. Let's take a look. It says I am 46% West Asian. That makes sense, my mom is from Iran. This animation is pretty cool. It says I'm 25% Scandinavian? I didn't expect that. 20% East European. That makes sense with my Germanic last name, Bayer and all. Oh, huh. 3% Greek and South Italian. I didn't expect that either. And 4.1% two or more ethnicities. That's really neat. Let's look at my DNA matches. Looks like a... Parents, second cousin, parents, second cousin. This is an interesting way to look at everybody that is in my extended, extended family. 
And that is just scratching the surface of what MyHeritage can do. They have a promotion going on right now. So click the link in the description and use code NSFFRIENDS. That's N-S-F-F-R-I-E-N-D-S. And you'll get free shipping on your DNA kit. Plus, as an added bonus, you can start a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history research. And you enjoy a 50% discount if you decide to continue it. Thanks so much to MyHeritage for sponsoring this video. I cannot wait to see what else I can do with the service and dive into my results even deeper. All right, back to the video. All right, getting back into it. This week, we saw loads of work happening at the Orbital Launch site. But perhaps more importantly, we also saw, you guessed it, new road closures. Initially, June 12th, 13th, and 14th were scheduled to be testing days, but those were revoked and only June 14th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. remains a possible testing day. This will likely be the start of Ship 25's testing campaign to verify it for flight atop Booster 9. In preparation for the upcoming static fire campaign, Ship 25 was detached from the crane. This means the work inside the tank is mostly complete and it is getting ready to be ambient pressure tested. Below the orbital launch mount, we're still waiting the installation of the steel deluge plates, which are expected to help significantly with a second integrated test flight. Like I said, we saw a lot of groundwork below the pad over this week, so we expect to see the parts of the system rolled out to the launch site and installed any day now. Meanwhile, over at the orbital tank farm, work to repair the damaged tanks continued. Over at the deluge tank area, we saw some more rebar cages installed, indicating more foundation work there. This is most likely to assist in the installation of additional water deluge system tankage and hardware. Next up, back at the production site, the new mega bay is also quickly progressing. Once all of these changes are complete in Starbase, it's going to look quite different, with the tents gone and the new mega bay and star factory building in their place. Right now, the second layer of an expected 10 total layers of the new mega bay is being installed. We also saw some movement of cranes as they're being prepared to assist with all the infrastructure work going on at the production site. Moving on, excavation for the pipes for the water deluge system has also been ongoing next to the orbital launch mount. Next up, we'll be placing the pipes and then installing all the needed hardware to make the deluge system operational. Speaking of the deluge, we saw some pipes going down Highway 4 earlier this week. This is most likely related to the deluge system, so installation of these pipes could be imminent. As for the OLM, not much work is ongoing on the orbital launch mount itself, but there's still a lot of scaffolding at the top of it. It's unclear if SpaceX has finished most of their work at the top of the mount, or if they're just focusing elsewhere, like on the installation of the deluge system. Before the next test campaign starts, we still need a new or repaired ship QD installed. The QD was removed a few weeks ago, most likely for repair work, and has been missing ever since. What hasn't been missing are cool Starbase related items on our merch store. In fact, we still have some integrated test flight patches and once they're gone, they're gone. So if you wanna get one, get it now. So get them while they last at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. For the final part of the week, we saw some massive tanks arrive in Starbase. These tanks have been spotted all over the country before arriving in Starbase. I remember seeing some local news from I think Kansas about them traveling through town. These tanks are likely part of the overhaul and replacement of the orbital tank farm for the second integrated flight test. Both of them were initially placed in front of the Starbase sign, then later moved to the launch site, next to the water tanks for the deluge system. So that answers the questions of where they'll fit and what the new foundation work in this area was for. Alright, that's it for this week. Be sure to stay tuned and we'll keep you posted on any potential testing that happens. And don't forget to support the channel and start exploring your DNA with MyHeritage by clicking the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching and don't forget, be excellent to each other.